In covering Putnam County, where a woman who was critically injured during a road rage shooting two weeks ago is now out of the hospital and telling her story. When my husband was standing up and the gunshot fired, I thought that we had both been shot, and I was scared that my son was watching both of us die because my son was just begging me, please, mommy, please don't die. I love you. I need you. Deputies say 56-year-old Keith Shaulis is the driver who shot Ashley Cochran during that road rage incident. He remains in jail without bond. News for Jack supporter Eric Avenia explains the chain of events that led up to the gunfire. This is Ashley Cochran when she was in the hospital fighting for her life after being shot during a road rage incident last month. She is now out of the hospital and talking about the violent event that has altered her life. I thought when I pulled over to let him pass that I was doing the right thing. I never dreamed that he would pull up and shoot me. It was here along this area of Highway 17, right next to the Panoma Park Dollar General, where the road rage incident began. This is where Cochran says she noticed she was being tailgated. She said the tailgating lasted up until she tried to turn off Highway 17 onto Lake Como Drive. I was making a right turn and he just came really close up on me, almost hit me and turned before I could. So I had to wait for him to finish so I could turn. Once they were both on Lake Como Drive, she said the other vehicle that was previously tailgating her was now in front of her. He was driving really slow. He kept tapping his brakes. I felt like he was trying to cause an incident and escalate the problem. She says she eventually passed the other driver, but then he started to chase her SUV and the chase got up to high speeds. Cochran says she, her husband, and their nine-year-old son pulled off the road into the grass, and that's when the situation turned from bad to worse. She says the driver of the car that was chasing her pulled up next to her SUV as she was opening the door. By the time I spun my legs and my face, all I seen was the barrel of the gun. And I had one foot on the ground. My door was open. So you, I, were, you were just getting out of your vehicle? Oh, you were trying to get out of your vehicle? Yeah, I was going to stand up and ask him what his problem was. Like, what's wrong with you? Why are you, well, you know? She says she never got a chance to say anything because the driver in that other car began shooting at her SUV. At that time, my husband had exited the passenger side door and had to like hit the ground because he shot a bullet in his direction also. But he was able to lay on the ground and look underneath our car and see the first three letters of his license plate. Cochran was critically injured from a gunshot to the stomach. Her nine-year-old son avoided being shot by hiding on the floor of the SUV. Her husband was also not injured. Cochran was airlifted to the hospital where doctors had to perform an emergency surgery to remove sections of her small intestine that were badly damaged by the bullet. The same bullet traveled to her pelvic bone where it not only remains, but has caused nerve damage to her leg. I can only feel 50% of my leg, so it's hard for me to, to walk. The driver accused of shooting Cochran was later identified as 56-year-old Keith Shalas. According to this arrest report, Shalas hit his car at a friend's house in Crescent City. When detectives located and searched the car, they said they found spent shell casings and damage consistent with firing a gun from inside the vehicle. Former JSO director of investigations turned News for Jack's crime and safety analyst Tom Hackney says this was an extreme case of road rage. It's, it's, it's scary to think what could have happened. It's scary to think what did happen. And, you know, it's scary to think that this is the kind of people sometimes that, that occupy the same uh, roadway that we do. According to the latest road rage data from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, aggressive driving accounts for 66 percent of traffic fatalities. 37 percent of aggressive driving involves the use of a firearm. Given this data, Cochran realizes she came close to losing her life. When I left um, in the ambulance and was pulling away from my husband and my son, I thought that was the last time I was going to see them. You thought you were going to die? Yes, sir. Now, law enforcement says if you are ever in that kind of situation, the first thing you need to do is call 911. Tell the dispatcher exactly what's happening. Give that dispatcher a description of your vehicle. Give that, uh, that dispatcher a description of where you're at, uh, the direction in which you are traveling. And if you can, give a description of the vehicle that is chasing you, as well as the description of the, uh, of the driver. Now, they say the one thing you don't want to do, they say you don't want to get out of your car and confront the other driver because you don't know what his or her intentions are, and that driver, 
may not know what your intentions are. Reporting live, Eric Avigny, Channel 4, The Local Station. Yeah, Eric, it sounds like what you just mentioned, that would just escalate things. You don't want to do that in a road rage situation. I want to ask, though, Eric, about Cochran and how she's doing uh, in terms of her injuries. She talked about some of her injuries. How's she doing in recovery right now? Yeah, so right now she is really struggling. Uh, she has some injuries that are considered or believed to be permanent. Uh, so it's it, her recovery is going to take a really long time. Uh, th because of this, uh, there has been a GoFundMe page that was uh, set up for her. We have posted a link to that page on our website, newsforjacks.com. Right, Reporting Avignon. live, Eric Avigny, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Eric. And Eric tells us that he contacted Cochran to hear her story after she reached out to us through the News for Jacks Help Center. So scan the QR code on your screen and it'll take you there. It's a way for you to contact us if you have an issue that you'd like us to look into, a question, or maybe a news tip. Again, that QR code on your screen, it'll help you go to help.newsforjacks.com.